Welcome back or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France Fanquette debate. We're talking on the heels of uh, the uh, big win by uh, France's conservative former prime minister, François Fillon, in the first ever primaries of the center and the right. He garnered uh, some two-thirds of the vote in the runoff, the official tally, uh, not yet in as we speak. We're talking about it with Pierre Danon, spokesperson uh, for the campaign of François Fillon. You've been with the campaign since? Three years now. Since three the, years. Mostly, mostly since the beginning. That surge only happened at the very end, so you yeah, were but confident? We, we were very confident. That's uh, what they always say. Oh, uh, but we said it. Uh, you did not listen to us sometimes, <laughs> but we said it because we were doing a lot of uh, meetings, a lot of gathering, and we could see that we were talking right to the people and that there was a kind of a bond. So Poles were massacring us, but we were still confident. Okay, we will also welcome back Corinne Narasigan, spokesperson for uh, the Socialist Party. Socialist primaries still in the future, they're in January. And uh, it's been uh, a bit of a soap opera at the presidential palace the last 48 hours. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yanis Koutsoumidis, uh, welcome back. Yanis, let me just get your reaction to begin about uh, when you look at the conversation in France. Obviously, uh, in Greece, it's completely different uh, from, from, from what it is here. What are your thoughts? Did I get back to that original question that, that we asked, which was, uh, did François Fillon run a great primary campaign, but not so good in a, in a general election? Yes, well, uh, the, the primaries were followed closely by Greek media, and I think the Greek public were uh, impressed by the quality of the discussion. I think it was a good uh, result for the Greek, uh, for uh, the French democracy in general, because it was very different from what we saw in the States. The States were exchange of insults, and in France was real uh, political discussion. So I hope that it stays on in, in, the, in the election as well, because France needs to lead in a political sense Europe as well. But what the, the leader, the new president of France, should uh, present is a new social contract that will combine a free market economy and a social contract for the poor. So we have an acceptance by the, the majority of the society to accept this harsh uh, austerity measures that I believe are needed for the French economy to withstand the tax wars that will come next year, probably by the UK, which will slash down its corporate tax rate and also by other countries. So France needs to be prepared to join this arena of uh, lower taxes and be prepared to become also competitive in the Eurozone again. All right, a tax war is, is, is what you're saying. Uh, Greece, obviously, with the huge recession that you have, we can even call it, I suppose, a depression uh, in Greece, was the first to see uh, a real shakeup of the old political order. Uh, in your case, it was uh, the far left uh, that came to power with Syriza. Uh, when you have a look now that uh, all, everything that's happening, uh, Brexit in, in June, you mentioned it, the election of Donald Trump. We have uh, the election coming up this weekend in Austria of the president, the referendum in Italy, uh, and then uh, Dutch elections. I'm seeing the far-right leader, uh, Gert Wilders, who uh, uh, is ahead in the polls, the latest polls we saw uh, this Monday. This blowback against globalization, uh, you're saying it's now going to lead to a tax war. Yes, because uh, the, the British Prime Minister, uh, Miss May, said she's going to slash the corporate tax to become more competitive uh, after Brexit. So we're going to see lower uh, tax rates in, in uh, the outside of uh, Europe. So Europe needs to be more competitive. The German government has announced it will also have tax cuts for 2017. The German budget passed last week and it has lower taxes. So France needs to follow with lower taxes as well to stay competitive. We've been uh, lowering taxes on on uh, the in, in revenue on the lo the lower classes already, and we've also done so for uh, uh, businesses, uh, which which caused some criticism on on our left. 
Uh, so I think we're, we're doing... But when you see the news out of Britain, what, what was it? They're talking about a 15, what is it, 15, even 12 percent in some instances. Yes, They're hinting think, at a 12 percent corporate tax rate. I think, I think then the question is how Europe will react, because we need to react in a united way. And we, and we also need to have strong European leadership in general, not just uh, for all the countries of solidarity between all the countries within Europe, uh, but also because we don't know what Trump's policy will be uh, internationally, uh, and we need Europe to be strong because of the uncertainty that we have now with the American uh, positions. And so I'm not sure uh, François Fillon, with his Eurosceptic skeptics view and his pro-Russian stance, is a good is a good option for France and for Europe today. Um, and uh, when it comes to what you said about austerity, I think I think the problem is uh, we've seen. In, including in Greece, that when you have an, an austerity policy that uh, you increase inequalities right away and you cause a, a recession, at least in the short term. And we know from the, the, the policies that were uh, deployed by Margaret Thatcher and by Ronald Reagan, then that the trickle-down economics logic actually increases inequality. So um, I really don't see when François Fillon speaks about pretty much privatizing social security, uh, I don't think this is something that French people want, and I don't think this is strengthening the social contract I and think, protecting, the, pr protecting the weakest. This is why I mentioned the social contract like a new deal uh, for France, to show to the people that lower taxes can create jobs and create wealth and create also security for the jobs that are now in danger. On the other hand, if you have just uh, cut jobs and austerity, then, of course, there will be uprising and people on the streets demonstrating. This is what the new president, if it's Mr. Fillon yeah. or whoever... It, this is not what be. Mr. Fillon is running on, unfortunately. Pierre, Pierre well, Danon, will it, be, will it be every country for itself under, under a, an eventual president, Fillon, or do you agree with Corinne Narasigan? There needs to be a Europe-wide response to, to the tax breaks that might come from Britons, for okay, instance. So, step by step. First of all, that's a kind of really... Uh, things that are uh, really uh, not true. Uh, François Fillon is, of course, not planning to privatize social security. This is almost laughable as, as a statement. This is He's just saying. saying that some of the comfort medicine needs to be carried by private insurance. But when you hear Yanis so, talk about and, and this, this tax war, how will he just respond one second, to that? Just one second, because we, we need to, 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 to explain sure. to your uh, viewers. And, uh, and we think, he thinks, that that's the only way to save the financial health system is to be reasonable on some of the spending in order to protect what is very, very important. So that's one thing. In terms of François Fillon is not a Eurosceptic at all, not at all. What François Fillon is saying is that the way it has been built since now 50 years with this notion of federalism, ever-increasing federalism, is dead. It doesn't mean that Europe is dead. It means that the way we are building Europe has to change. We are listening to the UK people. We are listening to the Dutch people. If we don't listen to the people, we will take Europe to its tomb. And what he wants okay, is so let to, me, so to me refund Europe, a strong Europe, on fewer priorities, including currency and therefore including fiscal uh, convergence, means having the tax rate converging to a reasonable level. Of course, we'll probably ask the Irish people who are at 12% to do an effort, but we are at 33%. We are the total outlier in terms of taxes. We have to bring our taxes down also. And the only way to so do that is to So you're for tax harmonization, tax harmonization, yes. but at a lower level, is what you're saying? Yes, of course. Okay. Of course. Now, uh, we're going to talk about the left, because there's been a soap opera playing out at the presidential palace. The president and his prime minister, they held their usual Monday lunch. It happens every week. But if you believe the press, it almost didn't happen. The interior minister's name... Uh, was even floated as François Hollande's uh, reported choice uh, to replace Manuel Valls, this over the pr current prime minister's uh, interview in a Sunday paper where he pondered running against the boss. Charles Pellegrin has more. Don't be fooled by the handshake. Manuel Valls is slowly launching a campaign to distance himself from President François Hollande. The Prime Minister claims he's getting ready in newspaper Le Journal du Dimanche, 
ready for the socialist primaries, ready to give hope, in his own words, to his party. Another way of saying he's seriously considering running to be the Socialist Party's candidate in the presidential election and attempting to stop the president from running for a second term. His main argument for that is the release of a controversial book that displayed conversations the president had with two journalists. He said this caused a deep sense of helplessness within the French left. Manuel Valls believes that Hollande should never have confided so much. The prime minister dodged the question of his possible candidacy, saying he will take his decision in good conscience and reaffirming his sense of duty to the French state. Yes. A few days earlier, he couldn't help but chuckle as he avoided a similar query. I'm tempted, but I won't give in to answering your question here. But I'll think about it. Only a few months ago, Valls declared he didn't like the idea of a socialist primary. Clearly, he's changed his mind. Colleen Narasigan, the prime minister's office, putting out a statement saying he's not resigning. Mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty extraordinary, isn't it, when you think about it, the way th this, this is all unfolded. Well, he had, he had to put an end to the rumors. Um, but, um, but, I mean, a prime I minister doubting his president in a newspaper I interview, is, I and think there is there is there's been questions uh, on the left for a while. What happens if François Hollande decides not to run? Who do we have to run uh, in the primaries to to uphold the, the line that we've? But the, the, the reasoning line. being, especially um, after the victory so, of the right, is yes. that time is now running short. Those First, primaries are in January. Yes, and should we'll François now, Hollande, for the we'll, peace of mind of his own party, announce? This well, week, we'll, now, his, we'll, his candidacy. We'll know very soon. We'll know in the next few days anyway, because the, because, uh, the candidacies have to be put in between December 1st and December 15th. So I'm guessing probably by next week we'll, we'll know. Um, and, uh, and I think uh, everybody, the cooler heads must prevail. <laughs> I think everybody needs to put their ingos in, in check because the right uh, electorate, has, as they've shown by massive... Uh, participation in the in the primary, which is a good a good good news for democracy, um, that they they will be united behind François Fillon. There, there is a dynamic there uh, on the right, and f facing that, the left has to be responsible. Whether they are candidates within the primaries, or the ones who very irresponsibly, in my in in, in my way of thinking, are are candidates outside of the primaries because. We need a united left if we want to pass the first round of the presidential election, if we don't want to have France choose between François Fillon and Marine Le Pen in the second round of the presidential election. And so when it so comes far, to... So far, nobody inside the Socialist Party is... is Nobody said in the that Socialist they're going party. rogue on that score. Yes, and no, nobody in the Socialist Party uh, is talking about running outside the primaries, and nobody in the Socialist Party, actually, we, we've had a, a discussion at the, the Bureau National, National, uh, the, National Bureau, uh, the, yes, um, uh, today. Uh, we, running outside M Macron is not a socialist, he said it himself. Uh, and... Um, and but that's interesting because Yanis Koutsoumidis, for in his mind and in a lot of French voters' minds, no, Macron, even though he's not inside the party, maybe outside, outside of France, but I don't think in France no, nobody believes that Mr. Macron is a socialist. Um, but um, I think nobody in the in the socialist party wants to see a competition between the president and the prime minister within the primaries. So the, the logic is, François Hollande must make a decision, and when he has made his decision, either he runs. And uh, this will we will know the, then who all, all the candidates are, and if he doesn't. But is he going to wait till the last possible minute run, till December fifteenth? If you're saying no, no, I think he, he knows that, especially because uh, there's a lot of uh, questions about that. That we we need to have a, a decision uh, sooner rather than later. Uh, and so when if, sooner? Is it this week? I, I can't tell you because that's his decision, um, but I'm, I'm guessing most likely next week. All right, an online poll for Harris Interactive without Valls in the running uh, puts the outgoing president in fifth place. 
uh, there you see François Hollande's number is actually below the unemployment figure right now. Uh, François Fillon uh, tops ahead of uh, the far-right candidate Marine Le Pen. Emmanuel Macron, we were talking about him a moment ago, the former economy minister um, who's making a way for himself in the center of the field, slightly ahead of the far-left candidate who's just gotten the endorsement of the communist. The last one you see on that list, uh, uh, François Bayrou, was the centrist candidate in 2000. And 12, uh, he hasn't announced whether or not he, whether or not he's going to run. Is 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 François Fillon going to be able to, uh, by the way, uh, court those centrist voters who might be willing to vote for François Bayrou? Yanis Koutsoumidis was saying that Fillon's going to have a problem when it comes to values because his values are not that of many French citizens uh, towards the centers. First of all, I'm very happy that you raise the point because you, you mentioned probably by accident that uh, uh, François Fillon had a. Uh, was against abortion and uh, against uh, gay marriage. This is wrong. Uh, he, is, he, he, will, he has said on record that he will never touch uh, He says he won't uh, overturn abortion. them. No, he will not. But that he personally was against it. But that's his right. That's right. his. Uh, if we, we are a free country and people can think what they want. But he has already said on record several times that he would not touch it. He's not uh, planning to touch again uh, the gay marriage. Is just planning to touch the adoption rules, which we can discuss about. So I, I think that there is a lot of overheat about that. And we, we have, I mean, we've played the campaign speeches of him saying, yes. for instance, the, the how good colonialism the, uh, ha, has been. And, uh, that, 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 no. A that, cultural that, exchange is what no, he said. No, that, Those that, were his that's words. That's not what he said. We could touch on that also. We were on values. I'm just saying that the values that he's displaying and that he's after we think that can easily bring the center of, uh, with us. And by the way, most of the center has already joined François Fillon. Most of the leaders have joined and supported François Fillon. So you will have center and right very much united. Remains François Bayrou, time will tell. But one thing is sure, is that François Fillon will not negotiate his program in exchange on having the center the rest of the center come to him. We, he thinks that his program is the only one who can uh, redress France and get us back on the right trajectory. So he has very clearly said that he will not negotiate the program. But let's say 90% of the center is already aligned behind François Fillon and, and with joy. So I don't think that, that that will be a major problem anyway. In 2002, we already had the scenario where it was the right candidate, Jacques Chirac, against a far-right candidate, mm -hmm. the, the, the father of uh, Marine Le Pen, Jean-Marie Le Pen at the time. And the left came out and voted en masse uh, yes. for Jacques Chirac. Uh, this time around, if it's the same scenario as the polls suggest, will you, Corinne Narasiguin, personally vote for François Fillon? Uh, my personal choice is that we find a way so that we, I don't have to make that choice, I, obviously. I, I understand. Uh, but, but, um, but will the French left stay I, home I, that day, or will they vote? I don't know. I can't tell you. I, I, will, I will definitely uh, vote against Marine Le Pen every time. There is no question for me, because I think, hmm. uh, besides the fact that I disagree with François Fillon about everything, I do believe that he's someone who... Uh, is a, a full Republican and who, who upholds the values of the Republic, which is not the case in democracy and, and the Republican, which is not the case of Marine Le Pen. And uh, I, I cannot uh, just stand by and, and let Marine Le Pen and, and her ideas become what France is in the eyes of the world, and it will, it will have dire consequences on the French people. Uh, but I'm not sure that the the Republican front, as we call it, would actually hold with François Fillon because because of his positions on identity, of a very monolith, monolithic view of what French citizenship is, uh, on uh, issues of women's rights and, and, and uh, uh, LGBT rights, because if he did see, say that he would not overturn abortion, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, he would be very progressive when it comes to the fact that we voted uh, for uh, um, uh, free access to abortion for everyone. The fact that we modified the laws on, on abortion, so he could still he could still you know reverse some things without completely overturning the right. And the, and the question of adoption, I think it's a, it's a is a, a a way of maintaining these uh, ideas that uh, homosexual parents cannot ever be real parents, and that's that's a big issue. 
uh, that no, no, we have true. to. This, it's true. It's no. it is exactly no. what is, the position is. He's in because favor of uh, homosexual no. parents adopting. He has no problem with no, that, no, and no, he has because, said it. But he, the, the, no, because his it's only mix. problem is that he doesn't want that this adoption erase biological parents. Yeah, but the, 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 the question of access to the question of access to origins is a real serious question that needs to be addressed. But it needs That's to be addressed that. also for heterosexual parents who adopt the same way, because you're also erasing the true history of people. And so the question of access to origin can be discussed, but it cannot be discussed based on the social, social uh, sexual orientation of the parents. Lots of reactions on the hashtag F24 debate. We'll read just one for you. Fillon has a better chance of defeating Le Pen than Juppé, and definitely a socialist candidate. Before we go, Yanis Koutsoumidis. Uh, it's um, somebody who is a staunch conservative um, and who's tacking to the right, who's going to be the standard bearer uh, for uh, the center and the right in France. Um, I've heard it said that um, it's not a year to be a centrist in any case. What's your, what, what are your thoughts in terms of that when you look at France? Yes, we see on, not only in France, in other countries as well, the centrist politics are on defensive now. And I think there needs to be a new... Uh, a new agenda, a new narrative from the centrist parties to address the issues of security, social rights, and uh, also the more competitive economy. Uh, unfortunately, there has been this move of populist uh, movements all around the world, I would say, the, the US, uh, other countries as well. And, and can those and, centrists, and can those people who believe in the European project and who believe in, you know, center left and center right, yes. can, they, can they come so, back? They can come back, but they have to be ahead of the curve. And when I say ahead of the curve, they have to address the fears and anxieties of the people, not with populist proposals, but realistic and achievable proposals. And this is what the centrist parties in many countries have failed to do. We need to tackle security, we need to tackle higher growth, and we need to tackle also the fear of the people that globalism is going to take away their jobs. So there needs to be a social contract on one hand and more competitive social, uh, economy on the other side. This is what the centrist uh, politicians can achieve in many countries. Yanis Koutsoumidis, thank you for joining us in Paris. I want to thank Pierre Danon. I want to thank Corinne thank Garcigan. Stay thank with you. us a little bit longer because our Media Watch segment is next. And we say hello to Emma James. Hi there. Uh, you've been taking a look at uh, how this resounding win by uh, François Fillon on the runoff is, is playing out. Yes, a lot less surprise out there this time around because, of course, the week before it was a great shock. Uh, no one was really predicting that he would win by that kind of margin. It was 44% in the first round. Yes, um, but it did seem to be fairly accurately predicted that he would be as far out in front in the second round. Um, taking a look now at the cartoonist wondering what kind of uh, president François Fillon could make, and, of course, tying this in with the death of Fidel Castro this weekend, um, it says it's Fillon who will lead the conservative revolution, and in Spanish it's says, ever onward to victory. Lots of eyebrow jokes, I've noticed. I know. I, he can't get away from the <laughs> eyebrow jokes. I feel quite sorry for him, really. Because um, short of getting them all plucked off, there's not much he can do. Uh, <laughs> this is actually an old uh, cartoon that was first drawn when he was the French Prime Minister. And what it says is, um, soon the retirement age will be 70 years. And in France, there's a saying, metro, boulot, dodo, which means uh, you take your train to work, you work and then you go to bed and that is your life. Um, and this obviously says uh, metro, work and then the crypt, um, pointing out that if the uh, retirement age is raised to 70, that's pretty late on in life. Um, another cartoonist here, instead of dancing with the stars, we have dance with a czar. Uh, a nod, of course, to the much publicised and much Ah, uh, We didn't have time to talk about it. <laughs> You're off the hook this time. <laughs> Pro-Russian uh, feelings, if you like, uh, proclivities of uh, Francois Fillon. Um, and that is something that a lot of people have been talking about. Um, if we take a look at this article, which is from a British uh, weekly, The Spectator, which is very much a conservative magazine, they've posted this one on their website, uh, written by Gavin Mortimer, who is a British man who lives here in Paris. Uh, and he says there was too much complacency in the Juppé camp. They had sat back and thought because up until just a few weeks ago, he looked very comfortably like he had an unassailable lead. Um, he prattled on about happy identity, says the writer, seeming oblivious to the reality of life today for all but the gilded elite. 
Now he goes on to say that Fillon travelled the country, tapped into the real concerns of the French people over Islam and the economy. But he also points out that the CGT union, which was behind many of those protests that we saw uh, earlier this year against reforms to employment law here in France, have already been talking about the fact that they say mobilisation will be on the agenda if we get Fillon as president next year. Um, he also when you say mobilisation, you mean strike be actions, streets, industrial yes, because actions? Because he's talking about huge um, cuts mm. and also... 500,000 cuts uh, mm. in the private, in the public sector, sorry, um, 500,000 job cuts. That, those are big, swinging changes. And, and France, traditionally, is not a country that likes to see that level of reform that quickly. Um, and they have already said that, much as many people were predicting, that if Fion gets into power, this is probably going to be the case. Um, he also talks about the fact that the National Front can benefit by playing on the fact that Fion is seen as posh and privileged. Uh, looking at the Huffington Post French edition, they point out another potential challenge for Francois Fillon. They talk about um, an ambush by those who didn't vote in the primary. Can they block Fillon in 2017? It's a loud um, headline. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> uh, what they say is that the Conservatives seem to have forgotten that it's only 10% of the electorate who actually went out and voted this Sunday. Uh, so their candidate is not a shoo-in by any stretch of the imagination. And they also point that point out that the old and rich have been overrepresented while the youth and working class were absent. Something echoed in this particular tweet here. Uh, Fion's supporters are retired and benefited from secure job contracts, social security, retirement at 60, and now they want to destroy it all. Interestingly as well, over the weekend, a lot of people were using this hashtag, which was, I won't vote for Fion because. And lots of different reasons given, but lots of people talking about... Uh, this one says, uh, vive le Moyen-Âge, which means uh, long live the Middle Ages, pointing to the fact that really they see Fionn as someone who harks back to the past. All right, so a celebration now, but um, a long campaign still to come. Long way to go. For both sides. I want to thank our panel once again. Thank you for joining us here in the France Vendette debate. Everybody.